All right, the next part right in here is that we're gonna start sewing along the edge that we recently pinned. And I want you to be sewing a quarter of an inch. Now this right here is one inch. On your ruler, make sure you're finding that one inch. Halfway along the line, of course, is your half inch. And then divide that half in half, and that right there, my friends, is a quarter of an inch. Now, if you're working with a traditional ruler, you're gonna be able, you're gonna have to be able to identify where that quarter of an inch is. In this case right here, here's my half inch. This guy right here is my quarter inch. In sewing, a quarter inch becomes pretty important. If you happen to have this ruler that's made for sewing, you can move this little guy right there down to that quarter inch and it will mark it for you so you don't have to hardly think. Then I want you to take your paper, or sorry, your material right here, and I want you to mark a couple of lines that are a quarter of an inch along, and these are gonna become um, the line that you're gonna hand sew on. Now, if you're sewing this by machine, because you got somebody who can work with you to sew it by machine, um, they'll have to show you where the quarter inch is on your sewing machine. But for all intents and purposes, this is just gonna help keep us so that we don't sew like a drunken sailor. Now we're gonna go along until we get to the edge that is the fold. This is a fold right here. And I'm gonna take this and I'm going to mark that last one right there, but know that I'm just gonna be sewing right off that edge right there, okay? After you've got that marked, you're gonna go ahead and take your thread. And again, I can feel that knot down there. And if the knot's good, then it's gonna hold. If it isn't good and it's too small, then you're gonna to have to end up um, going back and retying that knot. And the first one that I'm gonna do is gonna be right here at the very, very edge. Okay, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pull that up. Oh, look at it. it's holding, all's good. Now this part right here, you can either make the needle go up and down or you can make the fabric go up and down. And I'm a believer in moving the fabric up and down. My stitches are gonna be fairly small. And just with a little bit of up and down movement, I can take and do a whole bunch of stitches really easy. Now I don't want them to pucker or gather like that in the end, but here in the very beginning, it's all okay. Again, I'm gonna take and I'm laying my needle down and I'm gonna work my material. Notice it's the material that I'm folding back and forth and I'm keeping it on that 1 4th inch line, pulling that so that it's tight but not puckery or gathered. Again, I'm gonna go back and forth and I'm gonna kind of um, go with the curve of the fabric now as I'm going around this edge, getting all the way to the very, very end. I'm moving that material back and forth. And I'm pulling my um, pins out as I go simply because they get in my way. All right, but they're gonna hold my material where I want it to be until the very end. All right, so after we've gone ahead and done that one whole side, I gotta take and tie a knot. And the way that you tie a knot at the end is not the same way as the way that you tie it in the very beginning. I'm gonna take one more stitch because I think I got enough room. And then we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you what to do. All right, this is the way you tie a knot. You're gonna take and go down and back up in the same place that you just were. And you're gonna pull this, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, till you just have a loop at the end. And then with your needle, you're just gonna go through that loop. All right, that was good, but it's not good enough. So I'm gonna go back and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take a little stitch in the exact same spot that I was. I'm gonna pull it, pull it, pull it, till I have just a loop left. Sometimes they like to circle around. Pull it, pull it, pull it, till I'm right at the very end. Then I'm gonna go through the loop, and then I'm gonna pull it tight. All right, I'm gonna take my um, scissors and I'm gonna clip this just so it's about a quarter of an inch long, and you have done your first stitching. Keep your stitches short, keep them close together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the second piece of material. I'm gonna go, and if I have my needles on, or my pins on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. And because you're not gonna see this very well, okay, again, I'm gonna take and do this knot one more time. I'm gonna make a loop. 
I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna make the loop and it's crossed over underneath my fingers, right like that, can you see that? And I'm gonna have this tail about a half inch long. I'm gonna go through the circle, through the lasso, one time. You remember how many more times I do it? Did you say two more times? That's the second time, and this is the third time. Okay, that's one way to take and tie a knot, and then you can just go zip. Can you see my knot? Then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna cut this off just so that it's about a quarter of an inch past it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this second one, and about the only tricky thing about doing it this second time, of course I'm gonna draw my line, is the set the, this time when I do it, this tail <clears throat> might start, I might use up all this thread, and all of a sudden I'm catching the tail of the second side. Don't let that happen. Can you notice I can take and pull on this needle and that tail is gonna come up and up and up. I do not want that tail to be caught in my regular stitching. All right, that's the next thing I'm gonna do, but I'm not gonna make you watch it.